Hi guys, in this video, we are going to discuss about the construction of synchronous machine. Let's see, this is uh, practically what we are drawing. In generally, this is the synchronous machine construction point of view, the cross-sectional view. And the same cross-sectional view I taken here. Let's see here, this is called stator frame. The outermost part of the machine, which is called stator frame. And the next one, this is called stator frame. And the next one, this is called stator core, where we are placing the winding. Simply, simply see here, this is called the stator core, where we place the winding. And then after we have a small air gap in between stator and rotor. And then after we have a rotor core. This is what a rotor core. Actually here the clear pole structure they given which is called the rotor core. In that we are placing that rotor winding which may be field winding or armature winding of course. And after that, see inside this, this is called shaft, the machine shaft, this is called machine shaft. Simply, these are the parts what we have here, other than that, we can have a brushes here. What we have? Brushes we have here. And then after slip rings also, slip rings, of course we can have these also. Now, first of all, the stator frame made up of, can you tell me, the stator frame made up of cast steel or cast iron, anyone. Generally, for high rating applications, we can use cast steel. For low rating applications, we can use cast iron. What is the purpose of the stator frame, the outermost part of the machine? Simply, the stator frame provides mechanical balance to the machine. What it provides? Mechanical balance to the machine. Of course, the stator frame also provides outer protection. What it provides, sir? Outer protection. This is simply what about the stator frame. Generally, there is no need of laminations for this stator frame. In generally, the stator core, rotor cores are laminated because it carries the flux. It may induces, it may includes the losses like hysteresis and the decurrent losses. That's why we need to go for laminations. But here, no need of laminations for this uh, stator frame. This is the first part of the machine. And the second part of the machine, stator core. Yes, the stator core made up of, can you tell me guys? The stator core made up of silicon steel laminations. And here, what is the difference between stator core of the synchronous machine and transformer core? Generally, in transformer core manufacturing, which material we are using? CRGO silicon steel laminations. But here, no need to mention CRGO because no need of grain orientation here. Simply, no need of grain orientation here. And of course, the silicon content also compared to transformer core, here little bit less compared to transformer core. So, the stator core made up of silicon steel laminations. Why we are using this silicon steel? Because for silicon steel, the hysteresis coefficient is very less, which is equals to 1.6. That's why the hysteresis losses can be reduced by using the silicon steel. 
and what is the use of laminations by using laminations we can reduce the ad current losses sir how we can reduce the ad current losses when the laminations take place when the laminations takes place the core volume reduces generally r is equals to rho l by a where multiplied with l for numerator and denominator when we are using laminations when the laminations are separated by a insulating material its uh, actual volume will reduce then the resistance will increase then the eddy currents will reduce when the eddy currents reduces the eddy current losses also reduces generally laminations nothing but thin parallel plates generally its thickness around 0.35 mm for 50 h supply source 0.35 mm of course the laminations are separated by mica or oil impregnated papers porous material etc we can use there and here silicon the silicon content is like a 3 to 4 percent of silicon added to the steel <coughs> of course silicon is a semiconductor device steel is a conductor device when this semiconductor added to the steel slightly its resistive properties will increase which may reduce the eddy current losses also of course but combinedly the silicon steel having a less hysteresis coefficient also that's why sir if more silicon added to the steel if more silicon added what will happen when more silicon added its brittleness will increase when the brittleness increases the core gets damaged that's why you don't add more than four to five percent etc right so this is what about the stator core generally in this stator core we have a open type of slots where we are using the winding right here we are using in synchronous machine open type of slots are used because the open type of slots gives good stability what it gives you good stability for our synchronous machine and also the open type of slots right so easy for winding processor easy winding removal and winding placing everything is easy that's why generally here the thing is that generally in open type of slots the air gap length is more when the air gap length is more of course harmonics increased yes of course harmonics will increase but we can reduce that harmonics by using short pitch winding distributed winding fractional slot winding like a whatever we have a different different uh, methods to reduce the harmonics other than that when air gap length increases the power factor will reduce sir what about this yeah of course when the air gap length increases actually the power factor will reduce right but we can control the power factor by changing the excitation excitation by changing the excitation we can control the power factor that's why no need to worry about the power factor that's why in our synchronous machine we are using open type of slots of course in synchronous machine in synchronous machine state R, we can have a armature winding that armature winding in generally what we are using armature winding is a short pitch which type sir short pitch distributed type short pitch distributed armature winding is used in our synchronous machine because the short pitch winding will eliminate lower order harmonics and the distributed winding will eliminate higher order harmonics which is more responsible to get the sinusoidal emf that's why that's why so this is about the the state or core the state or core made up of what and why and coming to here coming to here the state are frame state are core then after air gap about air gap you know already what you know in any electrical machine what in any electrical machine if air gap length increases in generally when the air gap length increases or when the flux path length increases flux path length increases you know what about reluctance
reluctance reluctance r is equals to l by mu a when the flux path length increases reluctance increases when the reluctance increases simply the flux will reduce simply the flux will reduce in order to maintain the same flux density or same flux generally the machines try to draw the more current from the supply more currents from the supply when the more currents increases simply its respect to power factors will reduce actually we can explain this concept nicely in transformers and induction machine but whatever the electrical machine in any electrical machine if air gap length increases its power factor will reduce okay sir what about our synchronous machine generally the air gap length in synchronous machine is equals to 3 to 5 times of the air gap length in induction machine are you getting my point generally the air gap length minimum in transformer then after induction machine after that our synchronous machine in synchronous machine air gap length is maximum comparatively why sir why because generally in synchronous machine stability is very important criteria the stability directly proportional to air gap when the air gap length is more then the stability is more of course sir here air gap length more then power factor reducing right of course you are maintaining better air gap in order to get the better stability but what about power factor i already told you right what i told you this power factor can be varied by excitation by changing the excitation we can change the power factor we can control the power factor so don't worry about the power factor right and what is the next one what is the next one this is the the next one is the rotor core the rotor core made up of the same as a stator core rotor core made up of no need of crgo simply silicon steel laminations used and the everything is same about laminations etc etc here also generally the rotor outer periphery outer periphery slotted for winding which winding we are using here in synchronous machine rotor what we are using is called field winding generally in rotor we are using that field winding so its outer periphery is slotted for winding generally in synchronous machine rotor also open type of slots we are using as usual yes or no guys in our synchronous machine the rotors are two types what are those salient pole cylindrical pole right so in synchronous machine the rotors are two types salient pole synchronous rotor and smooth cylindrical smooth cylindrical or simply cylindrical synchronous machine or cylindrical rotor like we have a two types of rotors here other than that after this next shaft is there generally shaft is a device which responsible for the speed of the rotor this is shaft made up of mild steel or carbon steel the shaft made up of mild steel or carbon steel then after of course brushes we have generally the brushes made up of carbon or graphite you know very well and then after slip springs are there generally in synchronous machine they are called slip spring in dc machine split springs completely the of course mostly similar but the way of operation is different so the slip springs made up of hard drawn copper or if there is no option of hard drawn copper generally we can use phosphorus branch or uh, phosphorus branch we can use here you know very well generally if it is a stationary armature how many slip springs we have 
if it is a stationary armature two slipprings enough if it is a rotating armature how many slipprings we need if it is a rotating armature we need three slipprings you know very well already in the previous videos we already discussed for example this is a stationary armature then the rotor is connected to the field winding or rotor filled with the field winding the field winding should be given by the dc supply field winding should be given by the dc supply see the dc supply given to the rotor when which is a rotating device if it is a rotating device we need to use slip springs and brushes see here we have a two brushes and we have a two slip springs and here we have a two slip springs and the armature generally the armature will produce the emf it is a generator it will supply the power for example if it is a motor if it is a motor we need to give the three phase ac to apply to the armature when three phase ac supply given to the armature this is a stationary armature no need to provide the slip springs here yes or no guys so when three phase ac supply given to this stator or stationary armature winding then it will produce the rotating magnetic field you know very well already so this is about completely the construction futures of synchronous machine right guys let's go in the next video we are going to discuss about what are the differences between the sail and pole synchronous machine and cylindrical synchronous machine thank you guys